Rub up your engines! Now here's one even I can't believe. Hyundai has recalled 2021 Palisades because the brake fluid is contaminated. And guess what? They put the wrong fluid in the brake system. This is unbelievable crap manufacturing. Another Korean car company, again, with bad manufacturing. I can't believe this stuff. The 2021 Palisade is recalled because they put mineral oil fluid in the brake system. Now, these Palisades use DOT3 and DOT4. It's the modern type of brake fluid, right? Well, it turns out that the fluid they used has mineral oil in it, which destroys the rubber seals in your system. Now, the DOT 3 and 4 brake fluid has a polyglycol space, but mineral oil comes from petroleum and it's not compatible with the brake systems that use the DOT fluid. Now, the warning is it can make the brake cups and your master cylinder swell up. Well, it can make any of the seals swell up. It's a lot worse than that. It can destroy your whole brake system. Now, this is the $33,000 SUV that they can't even put the right brake fluid in. I don't know how they're going to fix it. Oh, we'll flush it out. Hey, it's too late. If that mineral oil has been there, it's already started to destroy the system. If they wanted to fix them correctly, they would have replaced every stinking part in that brake system that had rubber parts that came in contact with the brake fluid. They'd have to change the front brake calipers, the rear ones, the brake hoses, the brake master cylinder, anything that has rubber in it that was in contact with that fluid. This is just inexcusable that these idiots can't even make cars with the right fluid in them. I mean, I can't even make this stuff up. I'm thinking, well, you know, the Koreans have kind of poor quality control of their stuff, but this is pretty much unbelievable. Again, another reason I tell you, do not buy Korean cars. They don't have good quality. They don't hold up. Don't buy them. You wouldn't have this problem. And I feel sorry for you people that bought these things because I don't know how they're going to fix them. They all will flush the fluid out. Yeah. And then you find out two or three or four years later, the whole system goes out and you got to pay a fortune because the rubber already started to get eaten up. And then over time, it finally goes. Once that's done, it's ruined. And they would have to replace every stinking rubber based part in the system. And I guarantee you, they're not going to be doing that. And that echo says, can I use 5W30 GF6 full synthetic oil on an O3 Civic? I'm presently using 5W30 GF6. A five full synthetic. Oh yes, of course you can. The thing about the GF6 full synthetic is it was deliberately made backwards compatible. Now, if you're talking about using the 0W16 oil, no, you can't use that because the 0W16 is not backwards compatible. It's only good for the modern cars that say use 0W20 or 0W16 because the GDI fuel injectors and turbochargers it was made especially for those engines. And I did a video the other day with a guy with a Honda that had oil dilution problems. And when he switched to the 0W16, he had the oil analyzed and the oil dilution went almost completely away just by changing the oil. You couldn't use that, but the GF6 full synthetic oil is perfectly backward compatible. That's why they made it. They made them so you can use them in older cars. It is a better oil, and I would use it. It's a smart move to do. You don't have to worry about anything. Perfectly fine oil, and it's backwards compatible. Just don't mess with the 0W16 in that old car. That's too light. It's too light, and it's not made for the old cars anyways. Infinity X fan says, people get fooled by advertisement BS about how great Kia is. Hey, they're not good cars. Sure, they're better than once in the 80s and 90s, but they're still crap as of today. If they're ready make bad cars. I don't see them making good EVs either because all the problems they've had with gas cars. Well, I got to agree with you on that one. I mean, don't believe any kind of advertising. Why does a company have to advertise? If they have a good product, it could sell itself. You don't need to spend a fortune in advertising. Well, Kia spent a fortune in advertising in the United States. The one time I know they said, we're the fastest growing brand, blah, blah, because yeah, they made crap. And now they sell a lot more than they did before. But people are easily fooled by advertisers. They get stuck with something and it's too late. Then you're you're stuck with it and you have to deal with a company that won't fix it right. If the engine blows up, they'll patch it together like they did when they built the engines wrong. And they said, well, we'll fix them. They fixed them. And I had customers. Yeah, they fixed them. All right. And then next year, the engine blew up again because they didn't fix it right. They didn't rebuild it correctly. I have more than but problems with people that have been to the Kia dealers and their cars don't work right. When they get it back and they still don't work right, they don't have such quality mechanics from what I've seen. It's a whole morass of problems. Just don't get involved with them by not buying the stuff in the first place. You know, if you want something that's going to last for a really long time, because yeah, in the 80s and 90s, they were absolute crap. And they are better than they used to be, but they still got a long way to go with their quality. This is not a quality company. Come on now. It just isn't. OXL's 5S says, my car is difficult to start after I drive it. I got a Lexus 2000. It starts with no problem when it's cold, but a couple of tries to start after I drive it and let it sit. When it does, it idles low, then it drives okay. This is a typical problem as cars age. The fuel injectors are supposed to make 
conical shaped spray. It's like an upside down ice cream, right? And it sprays evenly. As they age, it doesn't spray perfectly right. And as they get old, sometimes when you shut the car off and it's hot, they drip a little gasoline. You drive a car for a couple hours, stop for lunch, come back in half an hour, start it up, and it's harder to start and it idles long until it comes up. It means you got a little bit of gas residue and it's slightly flooded out. And then once you rev it up, it clears it out and then it'll idle normal again. That's typical from dirty fuel injectors. Now it's a Lexus and you say you only have 70,000 miles, even though it's 22 years old, you don't drive much. So obviously the injectors can get dirty. Try some good cleaner, good fuel injection cleaner in the tank. A lot of times that'll fix it. If not, pay a mechanic like me to professionally clean with his pro pressure cleaners where we run the injection cleaner directly into the injectors and bypass diluting it with the gas in your tank. But try cleaning it with some good cleaner first. You might find that'll solve it entirely. It's a very common problem with any cars that ages. They don't spray perfectly and then when you shut the car off, the carbon buildup lets them drip a little and it floods it out when it sits. Now, it starts first thing in the morning because by then it's all dried up. It sat all night and the extra fumes that flooded it out and a little dripping gasoline has all evaporated by then. Our Forest 07 says, I got a 2012 Kia Soul. It rumbles and grinds on inclines. On inclines, when I start off from moving slowly, I get a rumbling or grinding noise from the engine. If I let up on the gas, the noise subsides most of the time. I'm guessing the oil pump's bad or something. You got to figure out if it's an engine or the transmission, right? And you're talking about incline. That's when there's a full load. From my experience, it's often the oil pump because they had problems with the timing chain, everything that runs the oil pump on that particular engine in 2012. They had to recall some of the engines to rebuild them because they weren't made right. So what you would do is you look at my video, Finding the Source of Car Noise of Scotty. Just put that in YouTube. There's a listening device that we mechanics have and you'd stick one on the engine and one on the transmission and then see which one is louder. If it's coming from the transmission, then your transmission is coming apart, which is also a failure problem in the key is they're not that well made. If the noise comes from the transmission, you're going to need a tranny rebuild and it could easily be that too. But if it's coming from the engine, odd snar, the oil pump's wearing, it's starting to rattle, you might try just replacing the oil pump, but that doesn't always fix it because when that's worn, generally the rest of the engine's worn and then you're going to get rumbling because everything's worn and when the engine's strained at low RPMs going uphill, there's more strain. But like I said, a lot of times it can also also be the transmission because that's strained the most going uphill when you're starting from slow and those have weak transmissions. So you get a sound listening device and put one of the sending units on the engine, one on the transmission. It's a 2012 Kia Soul with uh, 199,000 miles. I would get rid of it if that was the case. I wouldn't bother fixing it. It's not worth the money. And people are paying higher money. Now you might take it to a CarMax someplace like that that said they buy any car. And if there's no hills around it doesn't make the noise, they might not know and they might give you something for it and you get rid of the stupid thing. 199,000 miles, it's the engine and the trannies almost always fall apart by then in a Kia. Well, here's an interesting one. Toyota just stole the title from Ram for the official truck of Texas. Kind of a funny story, actually. This is the Texas Auto. Auto Riders Association. Each year they name the truck of Texas. Last three years it was the Ram 1500, but now they picked the Toyota, which is no surprise because it's made in San Antonio, right? I mean, it's kind of a political thing there now, right? And Toyota's North American headquarters is in Plano, Texas, so it kind of fits in, right? But here's the interesting thing. Both Ford and GM wouldn't give them trucks to use to try out. They declined to provide pickups for this thing. It's like, oh, well, those guys gave us a truck. Let's vote a truck of the year. What the heck? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly what you call a fair and honest analysis of trucks. Come on, the other guys didn't give them trucks, so they didn't use them. <laughs> Now, if you go by actual sales of trucks in Texas, the F-150 kills them all. So I mean, trucks that people buy, they're voting with the dollars or some writers association that's based on who knows what. Since the Tundras are made in San Antonio now, it only makes sense that they're going to vote that one in, you know? <laughs> These crazy awards that people give out. This is the official truck of the Houston Texans. Well, that's just pure advertising there. They're just paying to have it in. I know it was one of the Korean cars. They were the official car of the Texans, right? Because they paid money for it. I mean, I don't think the Texans wanted to be known as these small little Korean cars, but what the heck, money's money. We'll take it. We don't care. The Astros played in Minute Maid Stadium. What do they have to do with orange juice, you know? <laughs> it's just whoever pays, and it doesn't mean anything these days. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.